here with Cubs outfielder Mike Talkman. And obviously, if you had to mention 2023, you don't start that conversation until you mention the catch, right? Like, I mean, I I know it's probably just one play in your in your major league career, but in the moment, what did the catch against the Cardinals feel like? Um, I mean, in the moment, it was just like we won. Yeah, you know. Um, I think that that was a stretch during the season where there was. There was a lot of confidence in the clubhouse, but I know there was a lot of uncertainty about uh, what we were planning on doing, um, what the decision makers were sort of planning on doing. And, um, you know, the group that we had, you know, we, 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 we wanted to be together and we wanted to add to it. Um, you know, we felt like we were really starting to play our best ball and we knew that that stretch meant a lot. So, um you know, I don't know at that time just exactly how many games in a row we were kind of at in terms of, you know, the win-loss stuff, but we knew we were playing good ball, and just to keep that going, you know, sort of right at that critical decision-making time, um, it felt good. It just felt good to keep it going, keep the momentum going, because we felt really good about where we were at. And you know you have it off the bat, or do, are you... You know, um, the ball was kind of traveling weird uh, that whole series. It was It was like a hundred degrees with like 80% humidity every day. Um, so the ball was doing some weird stuff. I did not think being dead center, I didn't think just where the pitch was and the swing you put on it, that it was going to, you know, potentially go out, but, uh, the ball just kept carrying. So, um, you know, probably not the best initial read by me, but I'm just, you know, luckily I was able to get a glove on it. And it seems like the kind of ball that it, as you're reading it, you have to adjust your, know your approach to be able to get to it what's the point where you realized this is going all the way to the wall i need to be i need to be there for it um probably around when you hit the warning track because you know that's sort of that uh the alarm bells go off in your brain it's like i'm on the track this is how much room i now have so um you know that's sort of those on the fly calculations start kind of coming into play like i have this many steps and then i gotta jump and it is what it is and you you know you try to sneak a peek if you can or feel it a little bit but um you know definitely when you hit the warning track it's like okay this is the this is the area where i have to be at least aware of of the fence and that that moment for the team is a big moment on the season but for you personally as you think back on your 2023 season where does that rank in just, you know, personal, this is my favorite highlight of the year? Or how do you, how do you look back on that? Um, it's up there, you know, um, I, I'm, you know, extremely fortunate to, uh, you know, have gotten some of the opportunities that I've gotten in my career. So I try to be, um, you know, just thankful for all of, for, for whatever happens, you know, um, good or bad. Uh, and that, that particular situation, I was, I was just really happy to, that I was able to, you know, make a play for the team that contributed to a win. Um, you know, that's what I've tried to, that's the kind of player that I've tried to be is just someone who's willing to do whatever he needs to do to help the team win. Multiple gold glove winners for the team last year. Um, obviously defense was a huge focal point in the off season. I think Jed Hoyard said it wasn't their game plan going into the off season, but it just sort of the door opened and they were like, we can get much better defensively by doing this. How much of a focus was put on that in spring training, just uh, whether it was the center fielder, the third baseman, the first baseman, we talked to Nick Madrigal about learning a new position. And I thought what he did was incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, I think something, I, I, I think teams, if you, if you look at the teams that are standing at the end of the year, they take care of the baseball and um, you know, the, in my opinion, the only, the only absolute we have in baseball is that you get 27 outs and having it and, and, and creating outs when there should be outs is, um, I think kind of like a necessity to be a good team that makes your pitching better. It takes pressure off the offense. It takes pressure off the bullpen, uh, creates, uh, trust and, uh, the momentum created from you know, exceptional defensive plays can carry out through other parts of the game as well. So, um, you know, that was, that was definitely a, um, 
foundational aspect of our team last year, and I expect it to be um, this year as well. And on the other side of the ball, you you contributed significantly on offense, and and we saw this year you had I think the lowest strikeout rate of your career, the the best walk rate of your career. One at the plate, one of the best seasons you've had so far, and. I, I know I've seen in the locker room where you have a lot of conversations with people about hitting. It seems like you're talking about hitting quite a bit. Um, when you when you are having those those conversations, are you approaching guys as like kind of sounding boards for ideas? And how much do you kind of take things from them that you might apply to your own plate appearances? Um, it's so interesting because there's so much theory about hitting and what is valuable in hitting and different things evaluate things different ways. Um, but in order to, I think, be consistently successful, it's, it's like you have to take all of that information and like funnel it down to an extremely, extremely simple thing, which is I have to get a good pitch to hit. I have to be ready for a good pitch first and foremost. I have to recognize that that's a good pitch to hit and I have to put the, the barrel, the bat on the ball. And um, everything else sort of funnels down to that. So I think that, like, I love talking hitting, but I think it can get a little bit overcomplicated sometimes. And I'll, I'll talk hitting till the cows come home because I'm just extremely passionate about it. But um, I think that knowing yourself and being able to self-evaluate allows you to funnel the right information into into uh, into your game plan. So sometimes it may just be out of interest sake, right? Like you're just interested in what somebody else has seen, or you're always thinking, all right, if I, if I talk to Dansby about his at bats last night, he can tell me and it might be able to help me with something I'm looking forward to putting into my approach for tonight. Is, is it sometimes a little bit of each just like out of yeah, and cur- I think- curiosity, I guess is the word. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and and being able to understand what good players, what makes them tick, I think is an extremely valuable thing. Um, I mean, it's no different than, you know, I get probably in the business world, like, why is this person successful in business? Why is this person successful in what they do? Um, so I think there's value there. Um, and honestly, a lot of times it's it's it can be therapeutic just to talking to someone, but you're really talking to yourself because you're talking through your thought process and sometimes you'll say something and you're like, why am I thinking that? Or you'll say something and be like, Oh, like I did, I wasn't putting enough importance on that. And now that I've said it out loud, I've recommitted myself to it. So, um, I think there's just value in, in open communication with your teammates. And, you know, sometimes a guy will say something and, and he'll, and he'll feel really bad about what he's doing. He'll talk it out. And it's like, man, I don't see that at all this is what I see. And it can give a different perspective on that because you're probably never as, you're probably never going as good as you think you are when you're going good, or you're never as bad as you think you are when you're going bad. You're always going to kind of work your way back to that middle. And sometimes just talking that out is, is really, really valuable. Who do you use as a sounding board? That I, if I was a Cubs pitcher coming up in the farm system or where or a new player coming to the team, I would look at Kyle Hendricks and say, that's a guy I need to talk to because you can just see the cerebral side of the game and the success that he's had. Uh, Do you feel like there are a lot of guys on this team that can offer something to somebody, whether it's a young player or yourself or, or, or another veteran that might be just looking for an advantage one day? Um, Sure. I mean, they're, Kind of, kind of what I, I talked about before. There's a lot of there's a there's, there's an endless amount of information right now, um, but some things about like between the white lines, you got to get outs and you got to score runs. You got to keep the other team from scoring and you have to score. And um, just how the breakdowns would go, um, the, the the days that I would play out hit in the first group and I'd hit with uh, the catcher. The catcher would always hit in the first group because then he has to go do a lot of stuff. And a lot of times that was Jan and. I would watch Jan and he would always take a round or two. And it's like, I know exactly what he's trying to do in this round. He's trying to create a swing that can produce a middle of the field line drive with not a lot of effort 
And this is his game winner swing. This is his, we need a hit. We need a single, not a home run or a walk or a strikeout or a three true out. We need a single to win the game. And he practices it every single day. And if you look at his late game numbers last year, they were phenomenal. They were phenomenal. So it's like, well, this person has a really intentional practice every day. We didn't even really need to talk about it. We talked about it after I noticed it. And then I was thinking at the end of the year, you know, we had a lot of young guys up and he had a huge hit for us against Atlanta. And I went over to John Maley, who's going to be with us in the big leagues this year. Um, who's also a phenomenal hitting coach. Um, all our hitting coaches are phenomenal. Um, but he said, I was like, I was like, make sure these young guys know that, that Jan just practices that he practices that every single day. And that's, that's a guy who has a ring. That's a guy who's played in multiple world series. That's a, that's a winning player who's had a long successful career and he keeps producing because of his intentional practice. And Mike, we're in the, we're in the time of year where a lot of the attention is on free agents, trades, the way that, you know, teams are adding to their rosters and, and, and those changes that are happening. So the Cubs we've seen Shota and Managa come to the team. They make this trade with the Dodgers that brings you know, a reliever and, and a position player. But um, there's also there's always the possibility that there's a move that could happen that would impact your your role with the team. How do you how do you handle that as, as you're preparing yourself for the season, knowing that that possibility is, is out there? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose that's a possibility. Um, I, I feel as though I demonstrated how I can provide value last year. And um, I, did, I wasn't on the team for the first six weeks of the year last year. And I felt like I still was able to contribute to the team at different parts in the year. So how the season start is not how the season is going to be at the All-Star break or post-All-Star break or trade deadline or whatever it is. So it would be much better for me to focus on the things that I can control, which is making sure my body feels good, making sure that I'm prepared for a 162 game stretch plus postseason, which is what we're all, you know, trying to accomplish. And, you know, things like that over that long of a stretch, things, opportunities are going to present themselves and things are going to take care of, are going to be taken care of the way that they should be. So when you weren't there on opening day, is that exactly how you were thinking or were you disappointed and using it as motivation i mean you always want to be in the big leagues and i felt like coming back from playing overseas it was probably the best thing for me um just to i was i was just and i i love my time in korea my teammates were awesome it was an amazing experience but because of the language barrier i missed just chopping it up with the guys so i was like you know i'm gonna go somewhere I'm I'm close to home. I've I've only ever been on the East Coast or the West Coast, so I'm close to home, and I'm back. And I love chopping it up with the guys in the clubhouse. So I was just I was just looking forward to playing some baseball. Um, you know, I was very I was very surprised when I got called up because, you know, I try not to focus on what's going on uh, up there and and watch the roster and see what's going on because I, it it just kind of takes away from what you're trying to do. Um. So you always want to be in the big leagues, but, you know, things have a way of taking care of themselves. Speaking of chopping it up, are you a Bear, I mean, are you a Bears fan? I am. All right. So what are they going to do? Like, uh, this is, what's what's like, your this take is, on it? I've, I've said on our podcast that I think Jed has, Jed Hoyer has a huge job right now because you guys seem like you're ready to jump off the platform and move forward. And so it's like a critical time and could be a critical time in Cubs history for what happens now, next year, last off season, uh, whether it's development of players, whatever. But obviously, Ryan Poles has like the moment in sure. all of Chicago sports right now. Like, yeah, um, it seems as though he's done a pretty good job <laughs> yeah. so far. Uh huh. You know, agreed. Um, so so you'd like to trust. He, it's, it seems as though he's probably earned some trust on the decision-making side. Um, he's going to do whatever he does. So it's kind of like you just wait and see, but I, I hear you, man. I mean, it's, I've probably gone back and forth on it just as much as everybody else has. That's a fan of the team. And, you know, there's no denying 
that, you know, Justin Fields is an incredible athlete and an incredible player. And, you know, he's made some, um, seemingly he's made some strides as a quarterback that, that, you know, the t- the way the team was playing the second half of the season, I was like, man, like that's, if, if September goes a little bit differently, it's a playoff team and we're getting ready for a game on Sunday, you know? So, um, I, 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 I don't envy, I don't envy that job this off season. I'll put it that way. And, you know, whatever he does is, is, you know, kind of whatever he does. That's the life of a Bears fan, man. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's where I feel like most of us are. Yeah. You know, we're all kind of ask me one day and, and I'll have one opinion and a different day. I've, I've changed my mind. But starting a season with losing to the Packers and ending a season with losing to the Packers, it's tough. Yeah. It's about as bad as it gets. It's tough. It's tough. Um, you know, I have some friends that are Packers fans and, then you know, I, I don't know, but I, I think, I think the division's winnable next year. And, you know, I know that, um, you know, they're deciding to go a different direction, uh, with the offensive coordinator and, and, you know, it's a very offensive league. The NFL is a very offensive league. And, you know, it seems as though, you know, the team has a playoff caliber defense and continue to develop the offense. Um, I think the division is, you know, there for the taking. So I'm excited. You're pro Arlington Park or you're pro staying somewhere downtown or Waukegan? I, you know, I drive by every single day. I drive by Arlington every single day. So it was incredible. It was, it was insane to watch it come down the way that it did. And like, you know, you drive by one day and there's just the next day, there's a huge section gone. Um, it's like a mile and a half from my house. So like, if I was being like, if I was like, you know, <laughs> the value of my house. That's right. I, I'm, that's... I'm kind of thinking Arlington, but you know, there's a, there's a, there's a pizza place that's like kitty corner to Arlington racetrack. And I know they want to build the whole area. It's the best pizza place in Arlington Heights. So it's like, is that Wayne's Wayne's? Yeah. Wayne's is legit. Wayne's is legit. Thin crust legit. I'm telling you double decker. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Wayne's. Yeah. So if, if, if you come to Arlington, you can't mess with Wayne's. That's my big take on it. Very nice. I'm with that. Hey, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll run into you throughout the season, and uh, hopefully, we'll run into you in the postseason as well when the Bears will be getting ready for their midseason run. There you go. <laughs> 